Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to find the leak in your air conditioning system in your car or truck. So if you're not getting cold air and you're low on refrigerant, I'm going to show you how to charge it up and check for a leak because it has to be leaking from somewhere. In this case, we're working on a 2008 Toyota Tacoma, but this process works on pretty much any car out there. So we're going to turn the fan on, make sure the AC is on, put the vent setting to the top vent, and use a thermometer to get a baseline temperature reading. The air coming out of here is 92 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not cool at all. So let's charge the AC system and find the leak. The kit I'm using today has three main things you want to look for. First, you want to make sure it's the correct refrigerant. You can see we're using R134A. What you want to do is you want to look over here, and you can see right here it says to use R134A. If the sticker isn't located over here, check on top of your hood. A lot of times the sticker will be up there. You can also check the back of the owner's manual, which a lot of times will tell you what refrigerant you have to use. Most new cars today use R134A. Next you want a kit with a built-in gauge. This kit comes with the gauge and the nozzle attaches to the top, which is exactly what you want, so then you don't have to buy any special air conditioning equipment. This will plug right into your air conditioning system. Finally, you want a kit with UV dye. The UV dye is what's going to let us detect the air conditioning leak. It's going to be visible using a UV light. The good thing about this kit is it comes with a UV light to find the leaks with. Without the UV dye in it, refrigerant is just clear gas, so you won't be able to see where the leak is. And as always, I'll leave a link in the description to where you could get this kit. It's where I found it the cheapest. Go check it out if you want to try it yourself. When you're filling the system up with refrigerant, make sure that you use glasses and make sure that you use gloves. This stuff, if it shoots out at you, has chemicals in it, it's freezing cold. Simple protection like this will prevent you from getting blind or getting frostbite. Before we get started, let me give you the basics on how an air conditioning system works in a car or truck. Right down here is the compressor, which is belt driven and compresses the refrigerant gas. You can see the high pressure line coming out of the compressor and going up through here to the condenser. You could get a better view of the condenser from under the front bumper. It's this right here. It looks like the radiator, but it's actually the condenser. The condenser works just like the radiator, and it cools off the refrigerant, which gets very hot since it's being compressed. So it goes through the condenser, cools down a little bit, but still remains high pressure, and goes up through there, comes across, goes all the way across, and into the cabin of the truck. Behind the firewall is a valve that makes the refrigerant go from high pressure to low pressure. When the refrigerant goes from high pressure to low pressure, it gets very cold. And that cold refrigerant then moves through the evaporator, which you can see on the screen is a mini radiator. A fan blows over the evaporator, and that's how you get cold air. You can see the high pressure hose is narrow, and it widens up here, which makes it lower pressure. So it goes through the evaporator, comes out through the low pressure line, follows it this way, goes here. Here's the low pressure valve, which we'll be using in a few minutes. It goes down and then ends up going right back to the compressor where it gets pressurized again. So basically the compressor pressurizes the refrigerant. When the refrigerant changes from high pressure to low pressure, it gets really cold and that's how you get your cold air. All right, so this is gonna be really easy to do. Now that you understand the basics of how the system works, we could easily just connect this to the low pressure end and begin. Normally when you're gonna add refrigerant and there's no leak, you wanna pull a vacuum on the system so that there's no moisture. But since we know there's a leak, we're gonna just use one of these cans, not pull a vacuum, and charge it up. And then since this has the UV dye in it, we'll go look for the dye with our pen after the system's all charged up and been running for a little bit. Okay, so now we'll need to find our low pressure valve that we're gonna to connect to. All you have to do is follow your AC system hoses and find the Schrader valve. Sometimes the Schrader valve caps are labeled L for low and H for high. In this case, you can see this valve is labeled H for high, but our low pressure line isn't labeled L for low. But you could also tell the low pressure line from the high pressure line because the low pressure line is thicker than the high pressure line. Also, you can't really mess things up because the connector from the kit only fits on the low pressure line. The high pressure line and low pressure line both have different size Schrader valves. Now let's go start the engine and connect our bottle to the low pressure line. So now we're gonna start the car. Make sure the AC is on. And now we'll go to the engine compartment and I'll show you what we need to do. So we're gonna leave the fan running and you can see the temperature before. Now let's go add the refrigerant and you'll see how the temperature will drop 
So let's start the process of actually charging up the air conditioning system. The engine's running, the AC's on, you know your low pressure port. Now you're gonna get your can of refrigerant. This nozzle right here, you press back and slip over the end here. So after we connect this, you're gonna press the trigger and then this will pop up to how much pressure is in the system right now. So you can see, we press the trigger and it barely pops up because there's barely any refrigerant in this system. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the trigger down and let it charge. As you're holding the trigger down, turn it from the 12 to three o'clock positions constantly. Just like that. And what that does, that allows the oil and the, the dye and the sealer and all that stuff to also get mixed in with the refrigerant. And you're just gonna keep doing this. It could take up to 10 minutes, but this is all you need to do. It's really simple. So as you fill it, check the gauge every 30 seconds or so. You get the pressure reading when you let off the trigger, and as you can see here, it's in the green at about 32 PSI. So let's keep going a little bit more. Let's see how cold the air got. And you can see it dropped down to 61 degrees Fahrenheit, which is good. Now let's check the pressure again. And now it's just above 35 PSI, which is good enough to find the leak. Now we can remove the can and go look for leaks. To look for leaks, you'll need a dark place so that you can easily see the UV dye with the UV light. I would either wait till the sun sets or go in a dark garage. Before we go in the garage where it's dark and hard to see, I want to give you an overview of the common spots where you're going to possibly find leaks. So pretty much where you want to look. Now the most common places for leaks are down at the air conditioning compressor down in there where the two connections, the high and low pressure lines feed in. Also, you're going to be following these lines. You see where these connectors are? Where this connector is, there's potential for leaks. Usually there's no leaks in the actual hard line here, but you want to check anyway. It's worth it. It takes 10 seconds. You follow the whole line with the UV light. And you can see here, right where it connects to the condenser, there's an O-ring right in that little connector. They typically go bad, so you'll find the leaks in there. And those are the good ones, because then you just replace O-rings. You unbolt this, you put a new O-ring in, you bolt it up, and you charge it up. Nice and simple, cheap, easy fix. So that is a common problem area. So then in the condenser, which is behind the front of the grill, this is also another common problem area. The reason why is because you could see rocks and stuff kick up and hit that. So you just wanna make sure you look at all those places behind the grill. If we look under the truck, right here is our radiator, so that's the coolant. Right there is the condenser, so that's the air conditioning refrigerant. The other thing is, here's another connector with one of those O-rings I was talking about that tends to leak. So definitely check out right under there. And then we're gonna follow this line up. Comes up here, you can see this is that high pressure Schrader valve that we have. Check around there, you can even open this up and check in there if you want. Follow it along. Check around the sensor. You want to make sure that there's no leaking around the sensor. Follow it along. It keeps going. It goes up. And then you can check it right there where it goes into the cabin. Then you can follow that low pressure line out. Check right here. Check right in here. And then follow the low pressure line. You can see it goes down to the compressor and check over there. So those are all the main points that you want to check. If you have access, Right in here is the evaporator. If you have easy access and you can't find any leaks, there could be a leak in there. It's a lot less likely. Still another potential possibility. We're not gonna check it out because the odds of that leaking are very slim and I have a feeling I know where the leak is coming from. So let's go in the garage and check it out. One thing I should mention is this truck has a substantial leak where the AC is only cold for a day or two. In this case, we ran the truck for 30 minutes and that'll be long enough for the UV dye to leak out because you need enough time to actually have the UV dye leak out of the system. So if you have a leak that lasts a few weeks to months before you stop getting cold air, you might need to drive the car around for a few days to get enough UV dye leaking out so that you can actually see where the leak is. That leak is probably gonna be relatively small. All right, in the garage, we're gonna use our UV light. Came with the kit and we'll start at the compressor and work our way around the system. So I could get a better angle if we go down in through the wheel well. 
So this is the first area we want to look at. This is the compressor. So I don't see anything glowing. Oh, there's something. So right down there, you can see the glow. That's right at the front of the compressor. So that's where the compressor clutch meets the compressor. And that's a seal that you can't service unless you take the compressor out and rebuild the entire compressor. So there's definitely a leak there. So let's keep looking around. We know that we have a compressor issue. And then we'll go from under the wheel well, back up to the top of the engine. So we have our line that runs from the AC compressor. Goes up. I haven't seen anything. Go up. You don't really commonly see leaks on these pipes, but worth to check anyway. Send it through. And there's that connector I was talking about before with the O-ring. The O-ring goes bad, but in this case, it looks good. Now we're gonna go behind the grill. You get a really good view down here. There's that connector I was talking about before. Nothing leaking there. As we go across, I do not see any leaks at all. That looks good. So now we're gonna follow this line up. You can see that line coming up. Here's the high pressure Schrader valve. Take off the connection there and just look inside. Make sure that Schrader valve isn't leaking. Okay, that looks good. Make sure you put the cap back on. Just keep following it. Here's the high pressure line sensor. You wanna make sure you check all around that. I don't see anything glowing anywhere around that, so that's good. Follow that high pressure line all the way to the wall right over here. At the firewall, I do not see any leaks at these connectors here, which is good. There's the high pressure, that right there is the low pressure. We'll follow the low pressure line back. Check over here. We're good at this connector. And then we're gonna follow this down. And that connector down there looks good, and then that goes into the compressor. So that concludes our leak detecting with the UV light, and the only leak we found was at the compressor. We have a pretty big leak down there, and it's very obvious, which is good because sometimes leaks are hard to find. So that's how you search for leaks yourself using refrigerant with UV dye in it. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Up on the screen are going to be other videos that are related to the air conditioning system. You can click on the screen or you can find those video links in the description below. Again, in the description is the link to the kit that I used to help me fill the refrigerant and also find the leak. And the top tip for this video is, after you disconnect your adapter here, there might be some pressure left in this line. So you might get the UV dye spraying around a little bit. That's why you wear your glasses. If the UV dye sprays around here, you might get false readings and think there's a leak somewhere. You can see the UV dye sprayed there, it sprayed there, and some UV dye sprayed down on there. So you might think that there's a leak there, but in reality, there's no leak, it just got dirty. So make sure you clean off the area before you go searching around with that UV light.